Welcome to the news flash from the 2nd of April 2023 and we have very interesting topics so let's get started with the new vlogging kind of camera by Sony the ZV-E1 yeah the E1 is very very important because there's a ZV-1 as well which is like a point and shoot one inch type sensor kind of uh, vlogging cam and the ZV-E1 is a full frame camera sensor that they are using there basically the same from the a7s3 i think it is so yeah this is the very very compact kind of body flippable screen very interesting um, kind of camera like i said full frame sensor 12 megapixels so you don't get too many megapixels and it's probably not so good for photo shooting but more optimized for vlogging for videography in this case you can record 4k videos up to 60 frames per second and 1080p videos up to 120 frames per second yeah, I would wish like 4K 120 frames per second would be also possible, but it's nevertheless a very good uh, kind of rate that you can shoot here with if you want to also record a bit of slow motion. Um, we have 4K 30 video streams that are possible via USB, so you can stream it uh, via USB, or you also have the possibility to use the micro HDMI port to directly yeah, record it with a Ninja Atmos or any external uh, recording software there as well, which is very uh, hardware there as well, which is very interesting. And one of those very specialties of this is like the vlogger centric kind of software they put in so with lots and lots of intelligence they're trying now to better stabilize the shot so they have an ibis built in it probably is not as good as the bigger ibises from their larger cameras but it will work effectively if you use it with a stabilized lens as well as maybe also uh, EIS electronic image stabilization you have two versions of them one is more like likely a basic version this is like for little shakes if you walk very slowly if you walk a bit more aggressively or quicker then you need to get the yeah, active stabilization and this second stabilization will stabilize very good but will crop significantly into the image so that the the yeah, default kind of lens or the standard lens that they ship this camera also with might be not wide enough for getting everything into the shot just like this beautiful camera is here with i think 18 millimeters that it is recording here right now otherwise it's i think a very very interesting camera when it would come out for the right price but or if it would come out for the right price and when will it come out? It's also a big question because I, I last time I checked on Amazon, for example, it was not available yet. Um, big problem that we had also. Um, ah, it's available now on Amazon, but only for Prime, uh, for for people that are Prime members. You can get it now for three thousand euros. Two. 2,999 euros you can get this camera together with its uh, 28 to 60 millimeter lens which is um, yeah not wide enough as I said 28 millimeters uh, probably a 20 millimeter lens would be a bit better especially if you are cropping in a little bit and if you want to get it together with a very fast uh, SD card or XQCD card I think it's called then it might cost even more and you have to wait for one to two months which is like also very very ridiculous in this case so yeah the only problem that's holding this back probably is the price because three thousand euros is a lot for a vlogging device and um yeah who's gonna get it probably only professionals in this regard and not so much it's not an entry-level vlogging camp for sure Another thing that is very, very cool and has something to do with the stabilization, but also more like with AI kind of thing, maybe machine learning, where they are able to detect a person and a face of a person and eye for focusing already. But they also have now a feature that will crop into the sensor and for 12 megapixels doesn't always make sense to do so. But if you have like a 4K image and you want to just export it as full HD anyway, then it might be no issue at all. So they have an option to yeah, record um, 
someone's face and like I'm getting a bit closer like this so they're zooming in basically into the shot and follow you when you go left or right in this zoomed in shot which is like very interesting so you can have your camera statically somewhere placed and uh, it will if you go further away zoom in onto your face so you have like uh, the the half body kind of uh, camera in in focus uh, and oh, you half the body is in focus so you can like have a normal conversation it might be very interesting if you don't have a cameraman just like i don't have it here right now so the only thing i have is, is a slight arm that i can uh, turn left and right here and this is what the uh, zve1 has built in which is pretty interesting i would say because it can help of course with such situations where you're a bit further away and you will still want to have something usable and but i think it's more of a gimmick because for vlogging usually you have this uh, holding it in your hand and then uh you do the vlog so not sure how good this is but they have a new menu system that allows you to do everything on touch screen so you don't have to press buttons though i like physical button buttons for some default settings but some settings of course if you want to do it live on the screen makes also a lot of sense at least you have the option to do so the body alone if you don't want to get the body with the lens or you have already a full frame sony lens uh, you can get it for 2699 euros which is i think still expensive for this kind of camera and in this price point i would think maybe there are other alternatives that might be better even the aps-c1 zve 10 i think it's called might be a good alternative here because you get a light more lightweight package for sure stabilization and, and so on is always a problem with those kinds of uh, cameras but sony also has this uh, great gimbal stabilization that you have to apply in post so basically the gyro data is saved into the shot and you can then with a sony app just stabilize it which is um, working fantastically and uh, one one of the other options there and sony has many many other options just like for example here still when it comes to one inch type sensors here i would like uh, highly recommend the sony xperia pro i that has like a one inch type sensor and its uh, stabilization at 4k is working wonderfully as well so this is what i can tell you about the this was a bit of shaky about <laughs> the sony uh, zve one so the next topic that we want to talk about is tesla tesla has been hacked there was a pwn to own kind of hacking contest a hacking conference and um a research team managed in three minutes to hack a tesla model 3 and this allowed them not only to win a huge prize uh, for hacking but also a brand new tesla model 3 as well so this team uh, called a french team called Synective managed in three minutes to hack the tesla model 3 not by hacking the whole module but they only concentrated on one part of the tesla which allowed them then to access all the other parts later on so basically it was a two-step kind of thing and they had multiple hacks so after a few minutes they already managed to replace the tesla logo on the screen with the synactive how they call it synactive logo uh, so their own hacker or organization logo and uh, yeah very impressive this alone gave them two, two, uh, 250,000 euro uh, dollars uh, price money but then they even managed to hack over the ethernet port more of the basically the whole car and this allowed them also then to take over everything there and uh, another hundred thousand dollars so very very cool indeed <laughs> so be aware if you have a tesla and you're driving a tesla there might be a software update coming out that might be critical <laughs> for some reason and uh, this might be the reason then the next thing is something for all star trek lovers it has nothing to do really with technology but i know that lots it's like it's interconnected star trek and technology somehow so a new star trek tv series will be coming out actually not tv a new series is coming out it's not running on tv there but uh, yeah we all know that the star trek um, new um, strange new worlds is already out we have star trek picard in its last season probably and pro with high probability it's the last season and uh, then 
they also the Star Trek Discovery series um, came to an end so there might be something new cooking up yes there is a new series cooking up more for targeted for the younger audience it's not Star Trek Lower Decks it's just like more like a comic uh, kind of um, yeah and funny um, Star Trek series but this one is uh, with real characters real persons and it's about yeah, younger years, it's uh, talking about Starfleet Academy and everyone who played a little bit of Star Trek Starfleet Academy, the game will know that it might be very, very interesting because it's like the interact interaction with uh, the starships, but the interaction also with the crew that is growing up to be Starfleet officers might be very interesting idea and uh, I hope they are managing this right and put some easter eggs here left and right as well into this and uh, this might be also the start for a new yeah, Star Trek kind of trend going on with more and more TV series coming out that are focusing on various different things uh, some of nostalgia Star Trek Picard some of uh, even greater nostalgia in a way but also the old Star Trek or Star Trek Strange New Worlds and um, yeah then we have something for the younger audience as well with Starfleet Academy that might be also very interesting will be streamed on Paramount Plus probably and uh, then later on uh, maybe somewhere else as well but Paramount Plus uh, for sure and uh, yeah next topic next topic is about chat gpt i talked about chat gpt a lot already but now a new development has happened italy's privacy watchdogs have banned chat gpt because of privacy concerns and what they basically say is that chat gpt is violating the gdpr the general data protection R rule gdpr yeah rule <laughs> Um, because they are collecting data and enhancing their AI system by the conversations that you're doing with the AI and this is not really completely explained when using ChatGPT. Italy is uh, on the forefront here because all the other European countries that also have various other forms of GDPR, they don't um, have such a ruling out yet. There might be some others that are joining this uh, ChatGPT or OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT is saying they are following the general data protection law uh, or regulation, regulation, not rule, regulation. They are following the, the laws and the general data protection regulation and there shouldn't be an issue at all. Um, yeah, but it might be very interesting to see how this will develop. And by the way, meanwhile, others are calling for a stop of this kind of AI system, Elon Musk, uh, on the forefront here because he does not like AI I don't know he has fear that it will take over the world no I think he has a valid concern in a way because we don't know how this thing works completely and where it gets information from and we the, the whole society is not like prepared uh, dealing with this kind of another yeah intelligent information computing system unit i would call it like this because we have lots and lots of i tried it out lots and lots of things here chat gpt is giving you sometimes wrong answers if you don't know the topic that you are asking about you completely clue this you will get probably a wrong answer or an answer that's not 100 percent sure or accurate and this is a big big issue i could imagine if i was would ask something about the medical things there in chat gpt i could get completely wrong answers in my tech expert uh, field it's not a problem I, if i'm asking for a program code it might be a big great help to not write this down to have a computer write this like boring kind of code down for me but this is something that uh, is also not always accurate you can see it when when you know code you can see oh, okay he made a mistake there or it's not really what i wanted but if you don't have the clue you just take take this code that he's uh, doing uh, creating for you, you, you then it is not really working and then you end up with results that are unexpected or completely wrong and this is something if it's for coding my expert of uh, field here then if it's so wrong there then in other fields probably is wrong as well and one thing is for example if you're writing um, yeah 
writing a lot of texts about a certain topic and you're asking for sources, sometimes ChatGPT is just like pulling sources out of nowhere that from books that don't exist or books that exist but don't mention anything about the topic that he uh, that, that it is talking about so this is something to be very very careful about still and yeah it needs regulation in a way but i think we are not at the point yet where we can regulate it because we don't understand it fully so now not doing anything with it i think is not really helpful i think it is like this um when the internet starts also people were started pl start so playing around with it and then learned the borders they learned things that they can things that they can do things that they cannot do and so on and this creativity was overflowing in in a short kind of while until people started over to try to make money of course with advertisements here and there now we have left and right everywhere advertisements so this is something uh, to yeah, be aware of yeah, that's basically everything. What, what's in terms of tech news? Uh, Xiaomi, Redmi Note 12 series has been announced. I'm only concentrating on the uh, 12 Pro Plus because I think this is the interesting one. What do we have to know? 200 megapixel sensor. We have uh, 4K30 recording on it. We have still USB-C uh, 2.0. And of course, my camera ran out of batteries, but it <laughs> doesn't matter. So the Xiaomi Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus at a glance, we have a 6.67 OLED screen, uh, inch OLED screen, 120 Hertz refresh rate, Dolby Vision, HDR plus, uh, HDR 10 plus, 500 nits max, uh, typical, and then 900 nits uh, max, um, brightness, I think it's pretty okay for um, medium kind of uh, flagship device medium kind of medium medium flagship <laughs> nee, with a mid-ranger that is like more like a premium mid-ranger device we have also then android 12 which is i think with miui 13 still on a bit of a bummer because it's bringing out a new device and it has the old software i'm not sure why we have a 200 megapixel main sensor, which is great because this is the same that they ship in the flagship device 12T already, which uh, comes even with OIS in this case. But of course, then the other sensors are not so good. 8 megapixel ultra wide angle, and we have um, macro cam 2 megapixels as well. Front cam is only 16 megapixels, and uh, yeah, not so great. Also, no. 4K recording, but on the back we can at least uh, record 4K. The chipset that they're using here is the MediaTek 1080, and 1080 is a good chipset, I would say, but I would expect a little bit more for 500 euros because this is the price that you have to pay to get the Xiaomi Redmi Note 12 Plus, and this is something that is so, 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 yeah, bad. <laughs> 500 euros for such a device, and then think about it, like, I think we are in the price region, aren't we? Like Xiaomi 12, what is it? Xiaomi 12T, which is like a flagship. It's a lower end flagship, but still it's a flagship device. And how much does this cost right now? Yeah, you can get uh, the 12T for 500 euros as well. So there's absolutely no, it makes absolutely no sense at all to buy the Xiaomi Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus. If it costs 500 euros if you can get a 12t even the uh, the predecessor the 11t pro which is like a bit of older uh this one you can get for what is it 300 euros 300 400 400 euros 400 euros it makes the redmi note 12 pro plus not so interesting because you get a better processor granted 200 megapixels against the 108 megapixels of the 11t pro more details probably a bit on the 12t pro or 12 pro plus redmi note redmi note 12 pro plus but the 11t pro has the better processor better isp and probably then better processing of the whole image in general so it's a bit of a mixed bag so i'm not so excited by the xiaomi redmi note 12 pro series or let me redmi note 12 series in in, uh, in general so yeah too bad about this where i am really really optimistic about is the xiaomi um 13 pro device that i have here now in my hand and this xiaomi um, pro 12 
13 Pro device that I have here in my hand comes with vegan blue leather. This looks very, very cool, feels very, very nice. And this is one of the yeah, cool uh, things here of this device and makes this device outstanding. And of course I have it here right now. It's not a global model. It's actually a model that I got from Trading Shenzhen, but it has the Xiaomi EU ROM on it. And this allows us to use Google services without any issues, even Google Discover feed if you want to. So let me show you this. So we have here the Google Discover feed on the side. So no issues at all there with this one. Pretty, pretty good device. I will do an unboxing and I will do a review about this. So this will come out in a few days. Actually, I did already and it will come out in a few days. I just have to cut the video together. Of course, I will do a camera review as well as a comparison with the Xiaomi 12S Ultra to compare both here because both feature one inch size sensor and yeah, good camera setup that is very comparable and we want to compare them of course as well in terms of cameras and features also the software how does it differ Xiaomi EROM versus the global no not the global the Chinese one to see which one has an advantage here and there so very very interesting device that I have here and uh, yeah it is somehow Xiaomi weeks because I have also here the uh, Xiaomi Buds 4 in my hands. These are the open fit design because I thought, yeah, Buds 4 Pro are the in ears. I have so many in ears, but open fit design, new headphones that come out with open fit design are pretty rare. There's actually only, Xiao, uh, only Xiaomi, Huawei, and uh, Apple. And maybe you can count Sony in as well with their link buds that have like this uh, very weird shape. But yeah, it's it's actually also open fit, I would say, but in a very weird shape. So it's pretty rare still to have such thing. And uh, yeah, I'm taking a look at this as well and uh, check it out. And why it is very, very good, uh, you have to listen to my or wait for my video to come out uh, where I'll explain to you why this is, I think, pretty awesome, uh, especially also for the price. So that's basically everything for the news flash of the 2nd of April 2023. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have some questions, you can ask them down in the comments section. And what do you think about this new camera setup that I'm using here right now? Despite the fact that I was so stupid not to charge the battery of the camera and to switch to another battery here. What do you think about the setup? Also the audio, you can see I don't have like any Lavalier audio here using uh, shotgun audio here. What do you think about the quality of this video here? 4K, uh, 25 frames per second in this case. And yes, I'm not editing this video just like most all the other news flashes. I'm just like putting it right out there. So what do you think about this? That's everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.